Joining me now is Kimberly Crenshaw, executive director and co-founder of the African American Policy Forum and a leading scholar of critical race theory. Thank you for being here and indulging my obsession with <laughs> the, the history of square dancing. I am literally obsessed with this. My poor team, I feel bad for them. I had no I, I idea, Joy. No idea. Yeah. Well, that's why I love history, right? You yes. learn something new every day. Uh, if so you're allowed you, to. <laughs> if you're allowed to. Well, that is the point I want to bring up mm -hmm. because you are at the center of a lot of the right's pathological fear of critical race theory yes. and intersectionality. Yes. And I wonder just how it feels for you in a world in which that was the Grammys. The Grammys was multiculturalism and intersectionality embodied. Yes. But given that that is the real world, how do you feel to be at the center of this war on history? Yeah, well, it, it's it actually is is quite confusing from from day to day. I mean, um, I'll, I'll I'll give you another contrast. We've been talking about uh, this pushback uh, against the most uh, uh, critical uh, ideas that were once in the AP course. Um, how much these ideas have been under pressure uh, from the uh, cohort that that I call the you know anti CRT the anti-woke uh, cohort, um, and it seems as though there are many people who, if they, if they don't agree with it, they're willing to facilitate it. So you have that on the one hand, and you see uh, critical ideas like intersectionality, like uh, uh, queer uh, theory, like uh, Black Lives Matter being pushed out of uh, the curriculum and benched. And then on the other hand, like we had an event just Friday at Yale. So many students came that they were literally hanging out the rafters. There was so much of a demand for this new kind of sensibility, ways of understanding the world uh, that we uh, uh, live in. And so, so you have this conflict uh, uh, between the two. I totally agree with what you said. They can try to stomp it out. Um, people will still demand it. But here's the thing. In the meantime, a lot of damage can be done. Teachers can be fired, which they are, ask, ask Matthew Hahn and, and Amy Donofrio and, and so many others, for teaching Black Lives Matter or for teaching an essay by Ta-Nehisi Coates. Um, uh, careers can be ended. Uh, legacies uh, of, of thought that have been developed over the last 75 years uh, can be rendered illegitimate because uh, a decision that is made to actually make education abide by the lowest common denominator. And that that is, frankly, the neo-Confederate states below the Mason-Dixon who say, we don't want this uh, education, we don't want these ideas, we don't want people to think about changing the world for the better. And the College Board uh, happens to eliminate precisely the things that they don't want. I don't think it matters why they did it, really, and when they did it. What matters is the fact that they did it. Right. And I mean, the thing about it is, right, it, it, it's a war on language in a way, too. They've taken the word woke, which was a black terminology that black <laughs> folk would say, because, you know, if you're walking in the world as a black person, you can be lynched, you can be beaten. You, right. you don't know when you've got a good, you know, white person that's not going to hurt you or one that's going to hurt you. And they would say, stay woke, stay awake, stay awake. They've turned that into an epithet. They've taken critical race theory, changed the meaning completely and applied it. And they said they were going to do it. I mean, Christopher Rufo literally said publicly, this is what yes. I'm going to do. I'm going to change yes. the meaning of these words. And people buy into it. And, but I, I would just want to play for you because the quality of people who are fighting this fight, it varies greatly. Okay, so Marjorie Taylor Greene has decided she's going to try to up her sort of intellectual uh, <laughs> reputation and pretend like she's a, a real congresswoman. I, I want to listen and let you listen to her attempting to question and badger a witness uh, on, in whatever committee she's in on the questions of critical race theory, wokeness, et cetera. Here's Marjorie Taylor Greene doing her, being congresswoman. Can you tell me uh, how much how much COVID cash went to CRT? CRT. Critical race theory in education. It's it's a racist right. uh, uh, curriculum used to teach children uh, that somehow their white skin is not equal to black skin and other things. In Illinois, they they receive 5.1 billion um, at at an elementary school there that that used it for equity and diversity. No, a school, one school in Illinois did not receive $5 billion. And her definition of critical race theory, it's a theory that says white children in their white skin are inferior. Really? Really? <laughs> Man, really? who created critical race theory? Is that what it is? You know, and, and, and Joy, th this is what's so frustrating about it. Because the right has demonized critical race theory, 
too many people who know nothing about it are willing to say, well, um, it's controversial, so we have to step away from it without realizing that when they say critical race theory, they're talking about diversity and inclusion. They're talking uh, uh, about cognitive bias, structural racism. What they've managed to do was to gentrify the entire term critical race theory and put everything they didn't like about <laughs> social justice advocacy in it and basically yeah. counted on the media to largely say, OK, too hot to handle. We're not going to interrogate what it actually is. And when we have been saying, look, they're coming after everything, people basically didn't believe it. Now they see they're coming after diversity and inclusion. They're coming after uh, African-American studies. They, they, they came after LGBTQ issues. If anyone is concerned about the rightward drift of this country, the move to authoritarianism, the idea that legislatures can actually decide what you can read, what your students, what your kids can study, then they need to get involved in this right now, because this yeah. is telling us what the future looks like unless we stop it.